Um, so very quickly about me, um, uh, I'm a, as I said, I'm a New Yorker, a uh, bit of an evangelist entrepreneur. Um, I uh, came to the UK about seven years ago um, and have been here. I came to launch PayPal Mobile. I was with PayPal for five years. I uh, was recruited out of PayPal by RBS and was there for two years and did their mobile strategy uh, and built a team there. And for the last three years, have been working in this convergence of mobile, online, and financial services. And um, it's a very busy space. There's a lot going on. Uh, as was mentioned, I have a kind of mix of big clients who pay the bills and little clients who feed the soul and don't pay the bills as well. Um, and I use the analogy of the wave. So I think this metaphor for mobile is perfect. Um, mobile is a force of nature. There's no stopping it. You either learn to navigate, swim, surf, whatever, or drown. Um, that's where we are today. That's uh, what's going on. The presentation runs around the wave. The first half here is about the trends that were either created, enabled, or empowered by mobile. The second half is, OK, so given that, what's everybody doing? What are the banks doing? What are the telcos doing? The merchants, the uh, handset providers, et cetera, and the technology guys as well. Um, so let's dig into it. So first, it's about scale. Um, this is a chart. It's an old chart. I used to use it back at PayPal. There's two sides to it. One is traditional financial services touch points and channels. So Western unions, bank branches, post office, ATMs, point of sale terminals. The right-hand side are consumer networks that are out there. So whether it be broadband or PCs or landlines, television, and obviously mobile is off the scale uh, no matter how you look at it and growing fast, whereas the rest is, is not growing. It's decreasing over time. More importantly is how fast did it take us to get here? So this is how many years does it take to get to 80% coverage of the human population? Um, obviously, mobile beat everything. And you know, these are all kind of global human technologies. And how, you know, how many years did it take to get to 80%? Um, and it comes down to this. The world is changing fast. Big is not going to be small anymore. It's about the fast beating the slow. And you might notice that that's a particularly big guy saying that. Um, and it is true. It's, we're already seeing that the S&P 500 the average life on the S&P 500 has shrunk from 67 years to 15 years. And it's, go, and it's, and it's decreasing over time. Uh, the professor who did this study said, by 2020, more than 3 quarters will be companies that are unknown today, that don't exist. Um, speed is, and size is important. So the big guy looks scary and intimidating, but it's the little guy you got to worry about. And actually, if you backed off 100 meters, 200 meters, you wouldn't even see the diver anymore. But that's the threat. The big guy's not a threat. The big guy uh, is not an issue in this world. Um, I just learned some recent stats about super tankers, which are amazing. So to turn a super tanker, one degree takes 14 turns of the wheel. Now that it makes perfect sense. If you turned it any faster, it would flip over and sink because of all the momentum and inertia there. So momentum and inertia are fantastic. Super tankers are really good if you're going straight. If you don't need to maneuver, if you don't need to adjust, OK? The other amazing thing about super tankers, if you're driving a super tanker and you see something that's within five miles, you've hit it. The next order is abandoned ship. I mean, so, and so you know, the analogy is almost perfect, right? Large organizations are not unlike super tankers. It's hard to change. It's hard to turn. Uh, it's very efficient once you are in the right direction. But if you're not in the right direction, it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous world. Um, the Financial Times doesn't sell newspapers anymore. The Financial Times is a digital offering. They're, they're digital past their print circulation. And that trend is continuing. Their IP is no longer laid onto paper. Um, Time Magazine did an article, this is in back in August of last year, called The Wireless Issue. All of these images are Instagram photos. And the way that they did this article, the 10 ways that the phone is changing the world, is they went to 5,000 consumers globally, China, India, Europe, the States. Um, amazing stat that they found, 84% said they couldn't live one day without their mobile device. Cross culture, cross geography, et cetera. What are we talking about? It's personal, it's essential, it's affordable, it's fully global, it's connected, ubiquitous, proximate, it's always within arm's reach. It's sophisticated yet fun. It's trusted. It's measurable. It's sensitive. It actually can see and hear better than you. It's monetizable. And right now, it's very much an operator-led platform. Um, just so that we're abundantly clear, as far as I'm concerned, this is the most deeply and broadly penetrated technology ever. My worldview of human history goes like this. There's fire, 
the wheel, the mobile phone. And to prove that, talk about the lowly toothbrush. There are one-third as many toothbrushes on the planet as mobile devices. No sophisticated technology, no IP, not hard to build, not hard to ship, not expensive. It's just that connection, communication, way more important than dental hygiene for this social ape that we are. Um, so this first section is just to say, like, the paradigm has changed. This is not... Mobile's not internet in your pocket. It's not web on a small screen. This is a fundamental paradigm shift in human history. It has not happened before. Um, look at this. Mobile, electricity, safe drinking water. This is, again, population penetration of the population. Electricity is a prerequisite to mobile. The only reason electricity lags just a little bit is that people are sharing power. So if you go to Africa or to South America, there's a guy with a generator, and you bring your phone down to him, and you charge it up. Um, but other than that, they're almost exactly the same. And then safe drinking water lags by a, by a large amount. And then everything else, you know, internet, PCs, et cetera, landlines. So fundamentally different world that we're living in now. Acceleration and digital bridges. Um, this is a shot taken with Instagram. And what it's showing is how many months did it take to get to a million users? So the red guys are classic PC guys, AOL, MySpace, Amazon, eBay, PayPal. And you can see Amazon was over five years. By the time you hit PayPal, it was just over a year. Draw something at the top, launched. Nine days later, they hit their millionth user. Instagram hit 10 million in less than a year. Draw something hit 36 million users in six weeks. This is the effect of everyone being connected to the same network, right? Um, shocking, again, speed. Like, speed here is just incredible. However, speed cuts in both directions. Um, Instagram actually hit 2 million users in two, 100 million users in two years and then sold to Facebook, as you probably know, for what was meant to be a billion dollars, ended up being more like 750 million. But still, that was 13 employees, $750 million. It is a double-edged sword. Draw something that I mentioned. They peaked at 36 and a half million and then decrease 75% in seven months, down to 9.1 million. It's not just digital. So this is a, it's called a Taco Loco. Doritos did a deal with Taco Bell in the United States. They took a Doritos shell and they put it around the taco. When you compare that to the McDonald's cheeseburger, Doritos and Taco Bell sold 100 million in, two, in 10 weeks. And actually, I just found out that this stat down here, over 250 million to date is out of date. It's over 375 million units sold of this Taco Loco using mobile and social media. So the fact that everyone's connected to everyone else. When you look at McDonald's hamburger, it took them 18 years to sell 100 million cheeseburgers. Because of the connectivity, right? The hyper-connectivity, which we'll talk about in a bit. This is the woman who worked on it. She said, mobile's not a channel. It's a technology-driven cultural phenomenon fundamentally changing how consumers interact with brands and with one another. Crowdsourcing uh, has taken off with it as well. Quirky is a platform to build new physical products. So this whole thing is about digital bridges moving from digital world to physical world. 15 new iPhone 5 accessories in seven days. Seven days to have a physical product ready for sale, people buying it. Amazing. Um, Coke uh, did a press ad where literally there's instructions on the magazine, you roll it up, you fold it and link it to each other, and it makes a speaker for your iPhone. And it works, it's incredible. I don't have time to show you the video, I have a video for it. You put the phone in and it's like, <laughs> you know, it, it's a simple, you know, acoustic solution that Coke, sugar water, trying to get into the digital game, trying to participate in this smartphone uh, phenomenon. Um, Fifty Shades, I'm sure you've heard of the book, is the best-selling author on Amazon UK ever. It beat J.K. Rowling. Uh, it actually beat Instagram. They, they beat Instagram uh, and hit 35 million users before Instagram did, when you look at you know, months since launch. Again, not great literature. That's not what it's about. Not great food. It's that everyone's connected to everyone else. It's, it's, it's a virus that can transfer digitally immediately. And so you get these amazing things, physical products, simply because everyone is connected to everyone else immediately. Um, evolution of money. So 
We started with coins in about 500 BC, give or take. Um, by the way, I put this in because people always say, well, is cash going away? Cash isn't going anywhere because it costs about two and a half cents to make five cents and about 1.4 cents to make 10 cents. So the governments make good money on cash. Uh, and uh, I, don't, I don't see it going away ever. It'll, get a, it'll have a different role, but you know, television didn't kill radio, movies didn't kill television, like they'll all get relegated to their space. Um, we went to paper in around 1000 AD, uh, and then to the first digital money in about 1650 uh, with checks. Um, people don't often look at me oddly when I say that. Uh, this is digital cash, right? I write any amount on a piece of paper, I sign my name, I've taken a pile of cash and I've reduced it to a sheet of paper. So that digitization, when you hear cash-based economy, this is what they don't have. They haven't gotten to that, to that level yet. Um, and then to cards uh, in the 50s, 40s and 50s, and then eventually to the chip. And all of this is about the virtualization of value, moving from barter-based systems to bit-based systems over time. Um, this has already largely happened. Economists estimate that there's only about 8% of the world's currency actually exists as physical cash. Um, you know, most of it is sitting in sort of a digital form in your bank account, transferred via a card to someone else's bank account, et cetera. Um, this whole curve, one interesting way to look at it, which I really love, is, is this, going from sort of money 1.0 to money 5.0, moving from atoms and then through our revolutions, agricultural, industrial, information, to the communication revolution where we are now in a completely bit-based world. Um, this model came from Dave Birch over at Consult Hyperion, and uh, I, I really think it's great. Who's heard of Mint Chip? Nobody's heard of Mint Chip. Okay, uh, let's watch a quick video. Ever since the beginning of time, people have been buying and selling and using whatever currency was available. But today's digital economy is changing faster than ever, and currency has to change too. It is. Introducing Mint Chip from the Royal Canadian Mint, the evolution of currency. Money, as we know it, is fine for today. But tomorrow is a different story. Imagine a whole new breed of transactions that are smaller, faster, and virtually everywhere. That's where Minship comes in. Minship is currency in a digital form. Using a chip, you securely load value onto a smartphone, USB device, computer, tablet, or cloud. Maybe even some future device that doesn't even exist yet. Now you're ready to go. It's so easy that even a child can use it, especially for their allowance. Midship is better than cash, since you can use it online. And merchants will easily and cost-effectively be able to offer digital content in the form of small and extremely small online transactions. Things like buying a song, a news article, or a nifty glow-in-the-dark laser for your favorite online game character. All for a few pennies, virtual of course. Plus, no personal data is required or exchanged whether you're buying a decaf latte, a Canadian history article for school, or paying back that 10 bucks you borrowed last week. Minship is harnessing some of North America's best brain power. We are changing the future. You can too. Minch from the Royal Canadian Mint. The evolution of currency. So uh, this is... Uh, this is a bit staggering. So there's about a dozen or so major mints on the planet that make everybody's money. So the Royal Canadian Mint makes money for 35, 36 countries, something like that. Um, and, and so they take orders. You know, people, country calls up and says, I need this much coinage and this much cash. Now they're keeping their IP in a purely digital form. So it is cash. So if I have mint chips on a USB stick and you pick it up, they're yours. They're, they don't have any marking on them that says this is Roy's money. It's, it's, not a, it's not a PayPal account or some sort of digital currency account that represents money someplace else. It is money. If I email you mint chips, it's like sending cash but in a purely digital form. Uh, this went live last year. In August, they had a developer contest. In November, they announced the winners. They had thousands of developers apply. They announced the winners. Um, right now, it's in Canadian dollars only, but any other nation could ask for mint chips and put it in whatever denomination they want. Um, again, it's not like Bitcoin or anything else where, you know, this is a government. This is the, this is the Canadian government and a fiat currency, and instead of laying it, punching it out of metal or laying it onto paper, they're leaving it in a digital format. So the kind of, this is the manifestation of that, that, that uh, communication revolution and, and being in a bit space world.